<laughs> this story drives me crazy. What is this? What is this? Michael Flagg is a Maryland police officer, an upstanding Maryland police officer who faced second degree of assault charges because uh, him and another dude were like hitting on this guy's girlfriend and the guy's like, hey dude, can you kind of back off? You know, please back off and stop touching my girl. So the guy went down and bit the dude on the nuts. The cop, Michael Flake, bit this guy <laughs> on the nuts. I guess the more appropriate segue would have been from pepperoni to meatballs. <laughs> nobody, nobody, hey, nobody puts baby in the corner, you know what I'm saying? So this wasn't even a fight. This was just a, you know, a face-to-face talking altercation. And he just got down and chomped. Yeah, but he wow. didn't just chomp. There was blood found on his shirt and face. This guy chomped on his wow. nuts, dude. He, he, I mean, he was absolutely wasted. You won't see that on Chatterbait. No, you go. Well, well you don't. Well, you don't you want might. to see that on Chatterbait. <laughs> you, might, you definitely see some weird people on there. You're scrolling through the freaking uh, thing. You see some pretty weird dudes on yeah. there. Well, I saw one guy the other day when you're scrolling through the main page. Hold on a second before you go all freaking uh, grinder on me there, pal. You're Train wreck. You're scrolling through the main page, you know, where it has, like, everybody, the featured yeah. things. And there was this guy with writing all over him. And, I did, and, it, and on the little thing underneath it, you know, you can read a little bit about what the person is just on a little, tiny little piece. And I was like, wow. Yeah. People are people are crazy, but people pay these people online with these little tokens on the. Anyways, back to this. Story. For all of you out there listening <laughs> that have just learned about the site, you're welcome. Yeah. By the way. So don't go now. This guy had <laughs> listen blo- to us this first. This guy before. had ball blood all over his shirt. Oh. And no, no, no. Yeah. He. I don't know. How do you go from a decorated police officer to being so drunk that you're biting a dude in the package? I mean, really? He looks. He almost looks like Michael Brisbane. You remember that UFC fighter, Michael Brisbane? Right. He almost looks like that guy. I mean, he's bald and he's, he just looks angry. He he looks like he's 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 done on the force, obviously. But uh, his accomplice is still on the loose. The guy, the other guy. But you, you're hopefully not biting anyone in the nuts is what they're they're saying here. I mean, what kind? Of, you know, it makes me wonder what was the dude wearing because, you know, if you're wearing a good pair of jeans. That would provide some decent protection on the the, the, the bite attempt. Do you remember you know? those stabby jeans? Remember we talked about that one time? The, the lady tried jeans? to stab that guy, but his jeans were so good. Right, so the denim so thick. The denim saved his balls from being cut off. Right, I mean, you would think that if you had a good pair of jeans on, it would. Maybe. You'd think it would save. You need those. You need the button fly uh, Levi Strauss. Super denim. Yeah, are those good for ball protection. Yeah, the lower half they're, of the Canadian tuxedo. Yeah, they're they're highly <laughs> they're highly recommended for uh, testicular armor. Oh yeah, dude. Yeah. <laughs> chip a tooth on one of those. <laughs> you, you chip a tooth. <laughs> you know, here locally, we have a bridge known as the Skyway, and it's been in the news here in Tampa in the past. Obviously, the great uh, uh, accident that happened in the eighties when the the uh, boat. Wreck, you know, crashed into the original Skyway oh, yeah, and caused all yeah. those deaths. And so then they built the new Skyway. And, you know, look, there's a lot of crazy bridges all around the world. But here locally, it's this by far our craziest bridge. And, it's 180 and feet at the pinnacle. When you go to drive on it, man, I mean, you, you feel the wind. You know, it's it, it's it's very high up. Right. Uh, they built the, the, the new version of it significantly higher than the, than the first version of it well, for that, that was, exact reason well also that was to allow a lot of the new super cruise ships to get underneath right. that's that's the uh is that the furthest one out yes yeah that's the furthest yeah. it's the furthest one south uh from from everybody coming into t- into the bay everybody coming into tampa bay so you got these new super cruise ships that need to be able to go under them and, and they some, can't and sometimes they're close well most of the new ones actually can't we, we're not going to get any larger ships uh, in Tampa, because of that. Well, that's why they um, always po- uh, port down in Miami. Yeah. yeah, surprisingly, when it was when it was built, uh, it opened nineteen eighty seven. It was the uh, was one of the tallest bridges of its kind. It was definitely the longest bridge of its type in the world. Yeah. And you can't um, help when you when you drive right. over this thing, you can't help but feel this sense of trepidation, knowing the oh, history yeah. of it, knowing it's that it's steep too. Uh, I'm you not... know, but but in the news, you know, often and, and oftentimes you hear about the uh, folks that are suicidal here in the area picking the Skyway as their their uh, launch pad, if you will. <laughs> <laughs> well, you had those people a couple. Of years, or it wasn't a couple of years ago. I say it's probably fifteen years ago now that did the uh, pendulum, the pendulum swing, swing. And yeah, it snapped on them. Yeah, that was crazy. Well, this guy, um, this was last Sunday, right here, um, was changing his tire for some reason. He had a blowout on the bridge, and he was changing his tire, and he, uh, I think he was drunker. 
He just stumbled and fell off the bridge. Luckily, it wasn't at the 180-foot mark. It was only about 30 feet up when he fell. So but, he was uh, pretty much either at the end or, or the Yeah, entry. he was on one of the uh, yeah one of the, the lead-ups, the access points. He wasn't on the, the But how the do you fall itself. over? I mean, there's a high concrete wall there. So you must have really put a lot of weight into it. The guy must have been either top-heavy or completely stumbling. And it's, you know, the, the, the notion that you're going to change a tire on that thing is scary because it's narrow. Yeah, you, oh, don't, yeah. you don't have a lot of... Uh, Do you really have a caution lane over there? I don't know. Not I, much of one. I don't think there's a full lane. I mean, you're, you're tight. It says here he, he backed up to avoid traffic and he tripped over the wall. So that would make sense. If you're, if you're stumbling backwards, rushing, and a uh, nice one. Yeah, that happens. <laughs> um, if, if, you're, if you're walking backwards, you're stumbling backwards, and you hit that wall, and maybe you didn't know it was there, you're, you're afraid of traffic or something, yeah, I can see you might be able to fall over that. Look at this Japanese bridge. Yeah, you know what? I saw that one in the news. That one's crazy. That one's bonkers, <laughs> yeah. dude. I tell you, you got about a what, 45 degree incline on that thing. Oh, yeah. That's like coming down on the backside of uh, the Smoky Mountain uh, Parkway or whatever you want to call it. The Blue Ridge? Whichever. Foothills? That's the one. I mean, when you're driving down a bridge <laughs> like that in Japan, you got to be really careful. Riri, Riri, careful. I'd say Horish. <laughs> <laughs> on that note, before it gets any worse, guys, that brings... We were doing so good, dude. We <laughs> that brings to so an good. end the first half of the program. When we get back, we're going to jump into a quick commercial break. When we get back, the sports segment of the show, we're going to talk some NHL hockey, talk some deflate gate. Stay with us. Tough economy got you down. Are your money problems causing you marital issues? Unable to hide money spent at today's Gentleman's Club? Well, you don't have to be a gentleman to come to Gyrations. Gyrations. Gyrations dancers work on the barter system. We only hire single mothers whose homes are under disrepair. So if you're blue collar and you have a viable skill, labor leads to lap dances and maybe more at Gyrations. Gyrations. My plumbing is all fouled up and I need somebody to work my post hole diggers. Do you want VIP treatment without sacrificing your kid's education? Well, don't take your tool belt off. Work yourself a deal at Gyrations. Gyrations. Models are all over the age of 18 except where identification was not present. Were you injured in a car accident? Don't you worry. Don't call 911. Don't call a lawyer. At 1555 Gary Who, we see no need to involve the law. How you doing? I'm the one and only Polly P. As soon as you get in a wreck, you call me on my cell and I'll personally dispatch two, uh, shall we say, gentlemen to the scene to give the other party involved an offer they can't refuse. Whether it's a new car, money, it don't matter. We guarantee to get you just what you deserve. At 155 Gary Who, you forget about it. We work for you to get you what you deserve. At 155 Gary Who, the client is subject to terms and conditions stated on the website and must share the names of immediate family members before services rendered. I'm Edna Garrett of the Facts of Life. I'm listening to the Cranial Emission Show, and I can't believe it! I just got Joe standing up peeing! Girls! I get boys! Boys! I guess Fisty Shays of Grey on DVD. You see that? Sancho, you're supposed to wait for the commercial. The I know. I'm excited. I see it on the TV. We're watching the hockey game. The the Fisty Shays. Yes, Fisty Shays of Grey. Yeah, you. So you're getting it on DVD. Yes, Don Johnson's kid. No, oh, I know she's Dakota. Good. Yeah, she's not very pretty. No, the, the looks definitely didn't transfer. Yeah, Christian Gay is very weird looking too. Christian Grey. That's not. He's not Christian Gay. <laughs> oh, now I say Grey. Gray, gray, gray. Gray, yes. Gray. Yeah. Christian Gay. No. Christian Gray. Just, just stop. <laughs> it's not, it's not working for you. That's Sanchez. Sanchez, our producer here. Why? Because he's free. But this is the Cradle Mission Show. The second half of the program. Ben Charles, Miguel Hito, the C squared, Caleb Crispy himself, back for the second half. You want to call? You want to be a part of the show? 813-438-6068 is the number. If you're a social media guy, you're a fan of Facebook, then go to facebook.com slash the Cranial Missions Network. Like the goddamn page there. Or follow us on Twitter at Cranial E. Guys, it's the sports segment, and there is much to talk about if you are a Tampa Bay Lightning fan. Uh, wow. Not much after last night. What a game. 
last night. It, it's That's what you call it. To recap the series as a whole, to back up this Montreal Canadian Tampa Bay Lightning series. Game one, when we were broadcasting from the Lions then, that was game one last week. And let's face it, there was two periods that the Canadians outplayed the Lightning, I would say. One period where the Lightning probably outplayed the Canadians. Yeah, period two, they outplayed them. We think. got a little lucky in that game, and we squeaked that one out. We got, you know, Kucherov got robbed on his first goal, yeah. and then got the second goal that they argued was offsides. But, you know, if anything, that was just karmic payback for disallowing the first goal, which, you know, nine times out of ten is a goal all day long. Right. Uh, you know, I think there was some home cooking with the referees there in Montreal. What? But game two was just absolute domination by the Lightning. And the offense really came out. The, the, the power play woke up. You oh, saw four power him. play goals. You, you've heard so much about the power play being ineffective in the playoffs, so much about Stamkos not scoring a goal. He finally scored, wound up with a three-point night. Hedman looked unbelievable. Yeah, uh, he had that. Uh, Hedman, one of yeah. his better games yeah. of the series, because I felt like in the Detroit series, Hedman was relatively ineffective. So all of a sudden, we got real confident, took two games in Montreal, won both games, going back home, and then came game three. Game three, once again, the Lightning played on their heels quite a bit. Ben Ben say, Ben Bishop saved their ass. Ben that Bishop night. played on. He stood on his head yeah. in that game. His best game so far of the playoffs. I agree. Dramatically outshot in that game, Miggy, and the last second heroics of the great Tyler Johnson, the NHL playoff goal scoring leader, and Victor Hedman. Yeah, who Victor set it Hedman, up? That pass was patient. It was beautiful. Oh. One point one seconds left to win that game. And so the momentum was, I mean, we had all the momentum at our backs going into game four and what was a unique circumstance because, you know, we got the two game home games, you know, back here in Tampa, but they were back to back games, something that you don't see in the playoffs ever. Very and the often, only reason been a couple every year, but it's not very, rare, very not rare, in yeah. the regular season. Yeah, but in the playoffs is very rare. And the only reason we saw that was because of the whole Nitro Circus thing. Caleb, weren't you saying, uh. But what happened with that whole thing? Yeah, the Nitro Circus was scheduled to be here Tuesday night. They which added were, an extra night, didn't they? No, they were here Tuesday night, and then they were, I guess, in Orlando the next night. Oh. Uh, and so, so the the playoff game should have been Tuesday nights, but they had to reschedule it for Wednesday night. That's why we're back to back Wednesday, Thursday. Oh, that's right. And last minute, I think I found out Saturday that they canceled Nitro Circus. So it was, it was all for naught. Yeah, it was too late to go back and reschedule. It was. Uh, it it was what it was, and it is what it is. But it, uh, it was a tough situation. If you're trying to carry that momentum, you you play your heart out. You're exhausted. Now you got to play the next very next day. Goaltenders typically don't like to play back to back games in a regular season. It's very rare when you see a starting goaltender play two nights in a row. It's typically when you're going to bring a backup in. Obviously, you're not going to do that in the playoffs. Right. You got to go with the guy who's hot and. They go in and they looked flat the entire game, and the score really showed this six to two defeat. And Bishop looked like Detroit Red Wings Bishop in this yeah, game. Yeah, yeah. I mean, and on Montreal. Sorry, go ahead, Caleb. No, the, the whole team looked sloppy. The the passes weren't great. Nobody nope. was picking up those cross passes. No fortune. There was there was no yeah no aggression at all. There was no protection or even help for Bishop. No, nobody's being you pushed know. out in front of the net. I mean, nope. Montreal didn't play like super super well. It was just really easy for them. Yeah, well, they they just played much more aggressively, which you know neither teams are it supposedly was, very aggressive, and uh, they just out uh, out aggressed us. It and, wasn't uh, hard. It wasn't hard. No, at least. That was no. It was a. Uh, uh, it was great. I went to the game last night, and the energy in the in the arena was just amazing there. But uh, uh, that was only for about the first five minutes, and that. Uh, <laughs> Then it kind of went two away. Minutes, but, actually, first two minutes and what forty seconds was it? No, they goal? actually stayed alive. The 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 fans kept kept going and, uh, and really stayed alive. It was it was great. There was one point where somebody was uh, whistled the the let's go lightning. They whistled it and they were really loud, and they did it two or three times. All of a sudden, the entire stadium erupted. You know, usually somebody will try to get a chant off, and you know thirty people around them will do it, and that's about it. Right. This guy whistled it, and the entire place just erupted with it. It was it was pretty neat. You know, even when they were down two to nothing. I still kind of felt like, as a fan, I think everybody must have felt that way there, too. Because of the the way things have gone against Montreal, you still felt like, as a fan, they could come back. Yeah. But when you saw that third goal scored against Bishop, where it looked like Ben Bishop with the yips, 
which, let's face it. Is that the one where he basically caught it and then threw it in? Yeah. You know, yeah. He's had a lot of goals like this in this playoffs. <laughs> oh. so it's a mental thing.